Welcome to Whistle Stop Matsu. I'm Patty Sullivan here with Mayor Vern Halter. And we have tonight with us Jessica Smith, the Planning Services Manager. Do you want to speak about your award and some of the things that have been going on with transportation? and? Sure. So this year we wrapped up the 2035 look at the Long Range Transportation Plan for the Matsu Borough. And um, as we're finishing working on this project, where it's actually up for approval by the Assembly in December, and in the meantime, the State Planning Conference happened in November, and we won the Transportation Planning Award of the Year. It's pretty great. It's, it's outstanding, so we want to congratulate you for that award. Thank you. Do you want to talk about the Long Range Transportation Plan? Is that what the award was for? Yeah, sure. So the, the Long Range Plan looks 20 years into the future and um, takes some modeling data, public input over about three years, and um, uh, professional uh, input into what road should we look at improving in the future. And so there's a, quite a long list, and it looks at um, short, medium, and long term as far as roadways. It also looks at other modes of transportation, um, since we have everything here in the borough, and different modes, modal plans um, are actually other pieces and extensions of the LRTP, or the Long Range Transportation Plan. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a big umbrella plan for all of the modes that we have in the Matsu, and um, it just pieces everything together and gives a nice high policy view of um, what, what we should look to in a guiding document for the future. Mm -hmm. When is that coming in front of the Assembly? Is that going to be in the near future? Yeah, so the next, uh, that first assembly meeting in December. So we'll get a chance, the assembly get a chance to review it and make changes or comments. And you bet, we love hearing yeah. comments yeah. and uh, how we can make it better. And the public can still comment right up during the public hearings, there'll be a public hearing on it? And uh, the public hearing took place um, at the, the assembly meeting before this mm -hmm. one, and it was just, I believe the public hearing was closed out and uh, just the action has been um, continued. Okay. So debate and action. Yep, okay. to allow a little extra time for the assembly to take a look and review the document. Well, good work and congratulations on that award. We're Thank you. Very mm -hmm. proud. Transportation, of course, is very popular. Mm -hmm. Our transportation fair every year has something like 400 people. Over 400 attendees every year. And you had recent um, surveys out mm -hmm. on specific projects. Our growth has been, what, like 3% every year for, feels like 15 right. years at least. Yeah, that, is that right? That's, that survey, and that, yeah, I, I think so. That survey and that the near-term top five pro road projects was, that, that, that was a good one, I thought. Get the public's input on which ones they want to see funded in the near term and then some longer term ones. You mm -hmm. bet, and uh, many of those projects were listed in our LRTP, mm -hmm. so definitely taking that as a starting point and then seeing what else um, is on everyone's minds and right. if there was something that we missed and, and just making sure we're really getting a good pulse on, on what, what the needs are in the, in the roadway right. network. When, when was our last uh, LRTP? About 10 years ago mm -hmm. in 2007 was the last um, mm -hmm. update or, um, and it also had, as a piece to that, it had a map that showed us um, what our future might look and what look like and, and how those connections need to take place in our, in our network. Because um, sometimes we've built our networks, and this happens all over the U.S., not just in Alaska, but we build our networks and we don't quite connect through. Mm -hmm. And so you have sort of this patchwork of roads that um, aren't all flowing the way that a system should flow together. So that plan, it's called an Official Streets and Highways Plan, um, back in 2007, it really laid that out. So when we went to update um, the LRTP this time, uh, we definitely took into consideration some of those connections started making those short, medium, and long-term lists. And then in addition, which wasn't in our last LRTP, this time we did what we called as a fiscal constraint. In other words, we looked at historical funding investments um, in the Matsu for roadway projects in particular. And then we sort of planned out for the next mm -hmm. 20 years uh, what we could likely expect those funding sources to be and uh, what projects that they would go to to help build out that system. Mm -hmm. Of course, we're under constraint given our uh, state financial scenario. Uh, do we yet know how we'll fund these? It used to be, you know, state legislative grants often or matching mm -hmm. our road bonds. Any talk on that yet? You bet. So we worked with DOT um, on this planning document hand in hand. Um, and one of the things they were able to do is really look historically at the investments that were made in the Matsu. And looking back just 10 years, 
annually, the DOT puts about $55 million in the MATSU every year. We have been growing super, super fast. We went from about 40,000 in 1990 to today. Estimates are showing over 102,000. Um, some estimates are showing more like 104,000 out in the MATSU. And so when we worked with DOT, um, we asked them what kind of investments did they think were still going to happen. And they still felt like that 50, 55 million a year um, in federal funding was going to be invested in the MATSU. Now, they did say for probably the next 10 years to not expect any state funding um, to come from DOT or from the legislator uh, for capital projects in transportation. And then the other thing that we looked at was um, a little bit of funding coming out of MATSU, so local funds, um, just depending, there are different ways to do that, but it will be up to um, the assembly to figure out how right. to fund. Well, at the, at the managers and, and mayors meeting in, in Anchorage last week, there was a lot of talk about capital, and we met with uh, was it three senators and uh, some legislative delegation, and there was a big push to increase capital. The only capital the state put in this year was to match, so we get federal dollars for road dollars. You bet. And but there's still a lot of push to uh, do capital back into the state budget, and uh, to start pushing these road projects and things like that because. You know, it actually helps the economy. It actually gets businesses and, and construction companies and, and engineering firms, everything moving again. And so there's kind of a push, at least from the, uh, uh, there was 37 mayors at this conference, and every one of them voted to push that capital projects. And I think we heard the governor say he wanted to push it, and I think we heard some of the senators and legislators say they thought it was time. So mm -hmm. maybe we could shake loose and, and get some movement there. And Anchorage is putting road bonds before voters every year, is yes. that right? Is that something mm -hmm. where we might be headed? Well, we, we, our last one was 2008. It was, you know, it was a $64 million road bond. Uh, you know, that was with a 50-50 state match. When that, that's, they, they have a five-year state moratorium on that 50-50 match, which must be getting towards its end of its term. But without that match, it's really tough. Mm -hmm. You know, so we have to at least get that moratorium over, I think, before mm -hmm. we did another road bond. But you could do... Some specific road bonds might be warranted at some point in time, in the near term, mm -hmm. for the borough. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. I think there's no match with the Anchorage bonds, and voters are going for them. Right. So kind of a pretty well, flexible you know, voters, crowd. You know, they, <laughs> voters, if they see a, 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 a direct result from their voting, which is like direct bond, a direct result, they knew the swimming pools are going to build, and they, it's going to come back to the community, the Brett Memorial, they vote for mm -hmm. them. And, and that's what they did in 2008 on those road bonds. They knew the projects, they saw the amounts, and they voted for them. So mm -hmm. I, I, I certainly would not rule it out and would think we could do something like that. Okay. Anything else in the plan that... Uh... Um, well, road projects are what everyone asks about. Also in the, the plan, though, it did look at um, alternative modes of transportation, biking, um, trails are very important to this community mm -hmm. and access to trails, especially trails that are right on our road systems, but perhaps there are not facilities to, um, you know, stage and, and park your your uh, toys and kind of get out there and get on those trails and have a good time in the Matsu. So that was also something we looked a little bit at. Um, some of the higher level policy issues were, um, we, we heard lots um, back from the public on just being more aware. They want to know what's happening, what's going on, these types of activities, um, talking about what's in plans, what is the Matsu doing. Um, those were things that we heard over and over again. And so in Chapter 7 of the plan, it talks about implementing the Long Range Transportation Plan. And a lot of those initiatives are going to have to do with um, actually getting out there in the community and hearing what folks have to say and, and also providing them information as we get um, as we get further into the plan. So right now our new transportation planner um, who just came on board a couple of weeks ago, he is almost done. He has put together a very visual um, executive summary for the LRTP mm -hmm. and um, he's hoping to bring it to you all in December. And, and uh, what he's created is an online story map which looks at each part of the LRTP and um, just visually talks about what's in that LRTP mm -hmm. and kind of a way for you to walk through. It'll be a living kind of document, if you will, so that folks can pull that up and check it out instead of having to, you know, kind of flip through a, a, a policy document that can be a, right. a little bit tedious. Great. Right. Sounds well, really it good. It seems like the shovel-ready projects, especially in roads, are the ones that went out when the federal money does come down and the state money. So all the planning that goes into getting sh things shovel-ready, is a, that's a big advantage for the Matsu Borough Zone. Oh. I love your plan. 
Thank right. you. <laughs> Sounds like a really, I like it too. <laughs> really easy read with that uh, yeah. online map. I map. hope so. We're trying to make it easier to reach everybody and mm -hmm. let them have a chance to see what's in there. Great. And joining us now is manager John Moosey. Good afternoon. And John, you were going to talk about the Alaska LNG, big news. Yes, yeah, so right here I got the development agreement for the Alaska LNG, and this is something we are very um, excited about and hopeful. Um, when the Chinese president met with our president and Governor Walker, it really did a nice shot in the arm for the LNG project, but also too, it just seemed to open the doors. Um, I've had four contacts in the last two weeks um, with different um, on developers mm -hmm. and mining interests, uh, specifically because the Chinese market um, and uh, in America seem to be open for this. So we are excited about it. Port McKinsey, which is a long-term project, could be key in this whole development from a staging ground for the construction of the pipeline. Um, with that, they'll need the rail. Um, as you know, the Matsu Borough has applied for um, a, a federal grant of 75 million to get us um, closer to that. Um, it will provide great staging and also to a lot of other resources to market such as such as graphite. I mean we're even hearing coal again. Coal seemed to be dead um, but there is for the hard coal um, which is more environmentally sound than um, the coal they find in China you know maybe also in play. And then we have the other um, um, copper and um, other type of metals that all this could come into play. And if this thing happens for the state, it's really a game changer for a number of jobs um, for development. Um, I think we'll have people coming back to Alaska and staying as opposed to um, the turnover we've had leaving to the lower 48. So I'm very excited about this opportunity. And um, this is the farthest I think the state has gotten. Um, but when President Trump met with um, the president of um, China, um, Everything now seems to be in play. So that agreement with China, there was the, uh, the Chinese signed it, then financial institutions from China signed it, Governor Walker signed it, and uh, President Trump, is that? Um, that, that is yeah. correct, yes. In Alaska, Gas Line Development Corporation, right. um, also so signed it, PEC, wants 75% of our available gas. And um, so number one, we have the product, but we also have somebody who wants our product, and which never had both together. It's how do we get this to market, or we can get to market, who in heck's going to buy it? And so those two principal things have, have seemed to come together. And then, then several days later, it's my understanding, there was a secondary agreement with Vietnam on a, almost a similar, but for that excess gas, the 25% you were just referred to? Yes, uh, that, is, that is correct. And as you know, for Cook Inlet Gas, we worked a year and a half with a um, Japanese corporation mm -hmm. um, for their project. Now, that project didn't go forward. Um, at the time, but um, because we're hanging out so close um, to the Orient, um, we're in a great position um, for our resources. And um, you know, and Alaska is a resource state. Matsu Borough is a resource borough. Um, so things seem to be falling in place. There's certainly a lot of interest. Great to build the pipeline. I, I think it's been estimated to be 15,000 construction jobs, and uh, after it's built, two or three thousand permanent jobs is. Is that what we're looking at? And that is just for the pipeline. Right. And just think the services and that sort of thing that supply supply that um, will we'll be multiple of that. Hmm. Good. Very promising. Excellent. That's right. Locally, a little bit smaller cash flow, but certainly very important is the Matsu Health Foundation grants that went out. Uh, two very important projects to the borough, among them Willow Library. Well, Willow Library received a big grant. It was, what is it, 1.6? Nine eight right. million, so it's it's a big grant to the Willow Library. It's going to be a add on to they have the current library added on to the community center, and they they yeah. rebuild this and make it larger, and, and it's 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 old and outdated. So I know the folks in Willow are just extremely excited, and I want to thank the Matsu Health Foundation for making that grant. You know, and uh, they made several other grants too, didn't they, uh, Mr. Moosey? Oh, they certainly did. And the other one for us is the Hatcher Pass Alpine Experience, um, which is alpine skiing right. at Hatcher Pass. We were very excited when we were able to do um, our, our ski lodge mm -hmm. um, through some grants and put in all those, those miles of trails. And now to have the, the downhill skiing um, is just great. And I know there's folks who've been working on that for 40 years 
and I'm just excited that we have a piece of this to be able to complete this. So things are changing there. Things are really changing for services for um, our, our citizens. And then our, our opioid uh, epidemic, didn't they fund like uh, with the city of Wasilla, help them fund that, that position? Yeah, yes, they did. So this goes back to us throwing in $150,000 for um, a local officer to work with the DEA to really kind of eradicate this. And they came up and matched dollar for dollar what Matsu Burrow has done um, with the cities of Wasilla and Palmer. Um, also to um, Burchell High School, um, got a large grant um, to really kind of do a comprehensive um, approach to um, drug abuse. Um, I believe it was um, my house also got some dollars for, for, for the homeless kids and, um, and other areas really, to really do that. One thing I, that I found out through um, 538, that four years ago, uh, marijuana was selling in the United States um, about 74 bucks a kilo, kilogram coming in from Mexico. Mm -hmm. That product has dropped down to 24 bucks per kilogram because of the approval of many states for, for legalization of marijuana. They cannot make money, so what have they done? They are dumping heroin like crazy in the United States, really exasperating our, our project, our problem here. Mm -hmm. um, so this is, this is timely for our community, and we have many groups and agencies trying to combat this issue. Mm -hmm. uh, how is that Matsu Health Foundation funded? I know you you're work actively with the, with the hospital. How do they fund that? So they were pretty wise when, um, you know, a couple, a couple decades ago, when the local hospital um, was looking to, to do something else, a private um, um, health organization came in. Instead of just buying them out, they partnered with them at 35%. So 35% so of the revenues goes to the Matsu Health Foundation, and that money flows back into um, to our community, um, which is really wise on the decision it was make and so, and made. And so every year, um, because of hospitals, um, mm -hmm. Matsu um, um, Hospital has been doing so well, um, it really kind of also benefits our community and we're able to tack tackle some of these prog um, mm -hmm. projects um, from prevention, but also to the well-being issue and the healthier living issues. Mm -hmm. Recreation is certainly a part yeah. of that, that HACS grant. $500,000 grant, that'll help them buy a triple chairlift. Uh, they still need other funds, but um, that's a pretty big deal. And it's on borough leased land, Government Peak, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. And on the hospital, we want to congratulate the hospital. They, they recently won their state approval for their new beds. Is that, is that correct? That, that is correct. Yeah, that, and that's a huge that's shot, shot in the one. arm for... I mean, it's $83 million um, in construction projects over the next couple years. You know, right when the state is winding down from their capital construction projects, mm -hmm. we have um, uh, Matsu Regional Medical Center stepping up with that construction to really help out um, the investment in community, but also to our um, engineering groups, our construction families, that sort of thing. Um, it, really came in at the right time for us. And I, I, Patty, I am going to have to dust off my downhill skis and, oh, yeah. and you know, I don't, I don't know at this, at this age how it's going to go, but I'd like to give it a whirl. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. And on the Nordic side. Yeah, North, both sides, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Well, another form of giving, your staff lined up 58 turkey meals to hand out to a local nonprofit uh, and, and families. Yes, um, I am very, very proud and, and pleased with our staff. This is all on our own, um, own time, own dollars, and we've been doing this annually. We just get keep giving a little bit more, a little bit more. And so, you know, we are a large group of public servants who really want to help. That's why they work for the Matsu Borough. And this is just another example of them kind of stepping up with their, their own dollars and their own care. Um, I don't think there's a single person who does not love serving and wants to serve and, and do right by um, our neighbors and our community. Mm -hmm. Well, it's just wonderful to see that, that project, something like that happening through the borough. And uh, mm -hmm. so I want to congratulate and thank our borough staff for doing that. It's a, it just a, gives you a wonderful feeling at Thanksgiving time. So. Yeah. It does, absolutely. And, and I, I want to wish all, everybody in the Matsu Borough a happy Thanksgiving. And, uh, you know, and be careful when you drive to your grandma's for Thanksgiving. And, uh, Drive safely, but everybody have a happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. And, uh, and to all the safe. borough employees, yep. too. Absolutely. And let's be safe Thursday night and Friday morning trying to break down the doors to get that special deal. Um, 
<laughs> I think that's probably Black Friday. You're Black, about. <laughs> very much Black Friday. Now it's Black Thursday night. Black Thursday night. I'll miss that part. I hope. <laughs> Stick to the internet. Yeah. <laughs> Buy well, local. You. No internet. That's Buy right. local. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Yep. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank Happy Thanksgiving. Thank